Uh, Slovenia, Dojan and Vindisar. Yeah, these guys have got to go some. Lapshin, Avakamova. Uh, Lapshin has had a good race this year. Avakamova's had a good race. If they can both repeat that, then uh, they also could be looking at top five or six. I think so. A very good in terms of shooting and very fast shooting team. I do like the, the Swiss team as well, with bib number 12. Bork. Burkhalter and uh, Amy Baserga, the junior, double junior world champion. They're good on the range and the ski speed is comfortable as well. Yeah, Baserga, I was expecting just a little more punch, but I think really indicative of the difference in level between junior level and, of course, senior level. Yes, there's a, a big gap now. Remember when... Um, in the past, we've seen Gerstner coming through uh, to, to race for the seniors as an 18-year-old and uh, Neuner as well. They were at the top of the field in the senior category. That doesn't really happen anymore. Uh, you're right, the standard has lifted so much in the senior level. Yeah, on the men's, on the men's side, Latipov uh, was very evident at the junior level and, and he, uh, what is he now, sixth in the overall World Cup standing, so he's having a pretty good season. It would be interesting, Mike, to see the uh, correlation between junior world champion and senior world champion. How many...
less than a minute before the start of the single mixed relay here in Oberhof and the flags uh, behind the French, uh, that's Fabian Cloud just uh, indicating that the wind has picked up again. It swung round a bit from this morning uh, and now pretty much the same direction as it was yesterday. Uh, it's, it's a gusty direction, Mike. When it comes, it comes with a vengeance. Uh, I don't think we're going to see scenes like yesterday where the, the wind was picking up the spin drift and turning turning the visibility from bad to nothing. And for, for Nick, the range missing three out of five, it really was unkind to him, but he'll have it equal today to all those around him. Twenty-seven teams. Sweden, France, Norway wearing one, two, three. Four, five, six is Austria, Germany and Belarus. The Russians in seven. Ukraine are eight, uh, Italy nine, but uh, the easiest way to ID them is from their suits. The only two, the two most confusing this year are the French and the Italians, Mike, who are pretty identical. So much so. I would love to see a nation uh, create its own colours or put in its own colours uh, so that we can well, pick them out in the pack that little more easily. But, uh, well, the Italians, uh, similar to the French and, uh, and the Finns as well. So, yes, it, it is a little confusion. Yeah, Sweden and Ukraine have always been confusing, but uh, they've switched the dominance of blue and yellow. Uh, there you can see them in fourth and sixth at the moment. There's Simonada for Austria, wearing four on the side, just followed by Skoma of USA. I, I like this track, Patrick. You would love it tipped probably more with its twisty, curvy nature. And, and that's why you need to, well, this section is much easier now, but the section through the trees, that we may see some falls there. Now it's uh, the normal journey back towards the range. Christiansen leading the way for Norway, and he will be the first uh, in to shoot. No one looks too eager to go through. He's got France just behind him with uh, Fabian Cloud, who comes from Basseur-le-Rout, which is uh, just northwest of Zurich. Not particularly, it's got some hills, but not the mountains that you associate with France. But uh, once you're down that area, it's never more than an hour to find some of the best uh, skiing in the world. Uh, lovely down there. Another team, uh, just uh, looking at the French team, of course, uh, a Frenchman turned Belgium, Florent Claude, and... Uh, Leah Lotte, also a very good combination in terms of fast shooting and uh, skiing, which can hold the pace here over 1.5 kilometres. Yeah, what would be good for Belgium? I mean, t top 10 is sensational, but they, if, if they have the perfect day, uh, Lotte Lee, I've highlighted quite a lot this season because she's been shooting brilliantly, got some consistent results, uh, actually bases herself up in Lillehammer and, um, you know, Teamed up with Florian Cloud, the uh, the brother of the Fabian Cloud, who's racing for the French team. Uh, I, I think we could see something special from them. Yes, I'd certainly a top five if the shooting goes to plan. Potentially even a podium on a on a perfect shooting day. I've never understood giving your kids all the same initial for their first name. <laughs> a little confusing. I, I, I knew a family who had uh, four. Jess, Joss, Jabber, and the dog was, would began <laughs> with J as well. I've mean, never quite understood it. A dog called Joe. <laughs> uh, it does get confusing. <laughs> hey, well, the, the teams are well spread out. Well, it's into a headwind here, so you can understand why they're tucking in one behind the other. And Eric Lesser... Uh, he loves these relays. Any, give him any relay, and he, and he lifts his game. I'm surprised he's leading in, though. So, first shoot in the prone position. Yes, Benelin. Not quite the last to settle, but not far away from it. 
keep your eye on the targets at the top of your screen. Estonia certainly going very well. Four out of four for the Estonians at the moment, but they throw number five wide. Germany get five out of five. Norway, five out of five. And Germany's shooting a little bit better without the 30,000 fans in the Rheinsteig uh, Arena. The French having a meltdown. Fabian Cloud, what's uh, going on there? Well, I thought oh, he's... Penalty he's, loops. He's, He's often so much more comfortable when there's three spare rounds, but that is not good shooting at all. Coaches will be shaking their heads right now. Damage done. Japan missing three, Romania missing three. Uh, and some of these teams have missed more shots on this shoot than they did in the whole of the mixed relay earlier on today, where the sta standard of shooting, to be honest, was pretty good from uh, some of the lesser nations. Norway, Sweden, Germany leading the way. Christiansen has been in control since the start. So Christensen, uh, he is fast, he's much improved this season and given, given the uh, opportunity to lead again, those behind will be on their limit. Uh, yes, Bernelin, uh, Eric Lesser, they won't want to lead and they'll leave that, uh, especially into the headwind, up to the much faster uh, Christensen. Babikov, uh, surprised he used one spare. Normally, five out of five rapid fire is his way. So, four and a half kilometers for. or six kilometers for the uh, initial leg. With two shoots involved. There's Jesper Nellin. Just behind him, five, Eric Lesser. It's difficult to pick a winner from this one, isn't it, Mike? Uh, you know, Germany, Lesser, Hildebrand have got just about as much experience as the Ada Hauser combination for Austria. And that pays off on a day like today. Oh, there's Eric. Uh, well, there's Christensen. Absolutely doesn't want to lead into the wind. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so quite right. Er Eric will take it on. He's a bit smaller than Christiansen. <laughs> Meanwhile, further back, Fabian Claude has a tough job getting through the traffic, but he's slowly making his way forward, having uh, come out of the range in 22nd place. Russia pushing the pace with Anton Babikov trying to get back on terms with the race leaders the women getting ready for their first leg Lesser handing over to Hildebrand who's back in the World Cup team for this round anyway we'll see what happens when Preutz comes back on the scene must be getting a bit concerned Preutz might you know if you injure your arm or your wrist, as we've seen in the past, uh, you can still do some pretty good training. Uh, when it's your ankle, you're somewhat limited. Oh, very much so. There are ways around it, of course, but uh, she will be worried right now. So shoot two. Conditions darker. I hope most of them have put a slightly larger diopter in. Wind, Wind has picking picked up. up. Yes, it's a strange one. That's almost coming from behind the athletes down the range. And so not that bad in terms of moving the rifle. Steady Eddie Christiansen waiting his time as the gust uh, affects his stance and makes sure of five. Slovenia clear five as well. Good shooting from them. Uh, that's a very quick clear shoot from Mihar Dobshan. Finland Italy. go five with five. Have a look at Italy, where two bullets left, five target targets still to put down, one left, four targets to go. Yeah, that's uh, a lot of penalty loops. 
at least it's a shorter penalty loop. <laughs> that's all I can say for the oh. Italians. Uh, 75 metres, but that's uh, still 300 metres they've got to ski. Now, have they got time with uh, an eight minute leg coming up? Have they got time to do anything with the skis? Would you, would you be handing yours over? I, I would be. Uh, if you get this feeling where it's, uh, it's crisp and uh, just feeling that little smoother, it makes a difference. It makes a difference, not just on the downhills, but also on, on the, the, the climbing they have today. A oh. <laughs> little, bit, little bit lucky for Lesser with a split round, but he still hands over in first position. So Germany, Norway, Slovenia, the leading three. Austria, Sweden, Russia in four, five and six. Uh, looking down the list, Belarus, who was second in the mixed relay earlier on today, down in 14. And China uh, missing two targets, which is the same as they missed in the whole of... <laughs> the race earlier on today was it two or four they they missed four altogether they missed they did indeed and fabian claude the french team uh, hoping for a win today or at least a podium there he's used all for well, five of six spare rounds but luckily not on the penalty loop yeah italy on the other hand down in 22nd position uh, needing to mount a recovery like the swedes did this morning from 24th all the way up to fourth and what about Dovshan uh, in his stand shoot, 20.6 seconds, hit five out of five. And uh, that's why he's placed them so far up uh, the ranking on the exchange. Third and place. Chevalier Boucher up there now. Chevalier Boucher had, had a bit of a meltdown. Uh, was it in the World Championships? For the French, I think so, on the third leg. Yes, two penalties, wasn't it? Uh, severe at uh, that stage in the race. Dunkley for USA, down in 18th. Um, seems an awful long time ago that she was threatening the podiums back in 2017, 2018. Canada with Emily Dixon. So the leading teams and uh, Scott, I'm making sure that she is in touch with that leading group and you can see the effect of the wind. Uh, you really want to be at the back of this pack, get as much protection from the windy conditions as you possibly can. Germany led in last time and Hildebrand having to lead in this time as well. Allowing the chase pack, I feel, uh, just to try and come back and close a, a little. The pace is not fast at the front. The headwind is quite, quite noticeable. So this first shoot for the women in the prone position. And Russia are leading that second group. Kristina Retsova, I think, eager to make contact before this prone shoot. The what many would regard as the easier of the two shoots, but there's a certain strength of wind where standing becomes easier. And then when the wind gets really strong, the standing becomes more difficult again. It does, the wind when you're standing up tall, the rifle sticking out in front and the pivot point way behind, it really does move the rifle a lot compared to where the hand is so much further out in prone shooting. Wind is noticeable now, it's still back left or your left shoulder is coming over the left shoulder yeah, another little gust just blowing through the stadium and catches out the Slovenians Germany with Hildebrand taking their time Norway Scottheim only her second World Cup race since uh, for this season 
So uh, to clear five that quickly is uh, a really, really encouraging performance from her. Hauser of Austria, two misses, but uh, gets them down before she gets to that final spare round, which is always a little bit of a nervous situation. Germany, Hildebrand uh, was good to start with, Mike, but then lost away, maybe losing the focus, and Sweden in a spot of bother. Yes, got time. Uh, just, uh, I suppose, a little World Cup race rusty, and, and that always brings with it some nerves. I think she'll be OK on her second leg, the anchor leg. Yeah, Lien, of course, it is racing for Norway. Career, uh, as expected, starting to make a little bit of an impression. Abakamova teaming up with Timofey Lapshin. Russia way down in 12th at the moment. As yeah, we see Susan, Susan Dunkley. Oh, yeah, Susan, uh, that's, that's a shame on the penalty loop. One chance left, three targets standing. Oh, what has happened? She used to shoot so well. Worked so hard on the standing shoot. Got it all together. 2017, 2018. It's been a slow slide since then. Ukraine and Norway leading the way. Ida Lien just starting to push the pace. Uh, Abakamova of uh, Korea trying to close the gap down, doing uh, really well. Is that um, Ukraine behind them? I think, uh, I think it is. Yeah, Blaschko from Ukraine, Mike, losing a lot of time. Yes, the track time, not so good. Uh, the range is always comfortable. You certainly believe in her. She did have the fastest uh, overall range time, but uh, you, need, you need to be good at both, don't you? In this short, sharp race, you need to have good sprint speed or track speed, and it's only 1.5 kilometers. Yeah, Blaschko actually one of the fastest shots on that last shoot. 26 seconds, that's uh, that's not bad for a prone uh, shoot. It's excellent. There's Retsova, thought the Russian team might uh, be better. Let's say it's nerves for the first time, and they may calm down for second leg each coming up. Switzerland at 17. Belgium thought they might come through. They've still got a way to go, 55 seconds. Anything within a minute can still win this one. But uh, from the halfway point, you need to start closing the gap. Again, this is our sort of anemometer for the day, that little pile of flags. Uh, tells the athletes exactly what is coming when they turn this corner to the right. I like the way Ida Lien, she realized to, to break away was a good strategy. Now no one's getting the benefit to tuck in behind her in terms of drafting. So she's uh, completely taking charge of her own race. Christiansen just preparing for his second effort today. Uh, the women going second in both the mixed relay and the single mixed relay. Now to really even things up, Mike to alternate that as well. Yes, um, and, and there will be. Uh, of course, we don't have too many of the mixed relays or single mixed relays, but uh, it'll be interesting at the Olympics in Beijing just to see. And, and the teams will be putting their big players in, I'm quite sure. After all, the medals are the same size. It, absolutely. It's, this race is still wide open, though, isn't it? So when you look back to Team 10, it's only 37 seconds behind. That's Canada. So there's still a chance, uh, not even at halfway yet, for the race itself and the women coming in for the standing. Yeah, I was trying to remember when the um, mixed relay came into the World Championships. I think it must have been Antolz in, was it 2007? I think it was. Don't tell, it, me. Don't tell me it was that long ago. And it the really big guns, was. The big teams did not take it seriously, and then they realized that the tally of golds makes a big difference when it comes to going home. There's a lot Dust. of movement 
Yes, the wind. You can see her hair blowing. There's the, the gust coming through, settling a little now. But you can see the tension in the face. We commented on how relaxed the Urbergs look when they have the rifle. Lien is in a spot of bother, uh, saved only by the fact that Austria have missed three already. Slovenia, two targets left standing. Is anyone going to clear in five? Germany might do it. Good shooting from the Germans oh. and uh, Francisca Hildebrand. Oh, that could be the ticket to uh, China that she needs. Great shooting from Hildebrand. And if they go on to win this one, that could be the key moment of this race. And look at those around her missing so many. And when Lisa Teresa Hauser goes on the penalty loop, you can absolutely say for a certainty that the conditions are not easy. Yeah, France are on, not once, but twice. Uh, Sweden get away unscathed, but only just, as do the Norwegians, who come out 15 seconds behind. Uh, Norway were first in, followed by Slovenia, with Austria in third. All change yet again. And uh, as we approach the halfway stage, well, we're at the halfway stage, uh, just about, you can, you can guarantee there will be more changes as this race goes on. Belgium pull themselves up into 10th now fighting it out with the Chinese and then the Swiss back in 11 Amy Berserga one or two issues but uh, an average performance by her standards well that was incredible the amount of change there in one short moment of time in 30 seconds and now Norway find themselves in sixth place 15 seconds behind yeah great shooting by Hildebrand uh, not the quickest, but hitting five, 31.2 seconds. Ava Kamova actually of Korea with a 24.3 second shoot. So uh, really letting them rip. And the Chinese with Meng doing the same. Lesser. It's a while since he's found himself at the front of a relay, but he leads the way and he's got seven seconds to play with over Ukraine, Russia, Slovenia. Sweden and Norway, the two Scandinavian teams, have uh, had a sniff of the front, but been pushed back fairly convincingly as Simonada approaches the mark. What's he going to be, 25? Well, 25.6. But, uh, and, and Simonada, he's not used to finding himself this far back in a single mix, really. Uh, teamed up with Hauser, they're normally very, very sharp, very good on the range. Christensen uh, pulling back time rapidly, Patrick. Uh, it was over 15 seconds. He's already caught the chasing pack. He's in that chasing pack now. Penalty loops so far for Russia and Austria. Korea have done a penalty loop. France have done three. Uh, surely that's put them out of contention, but they're much shorter loops. Uh, so the gap at the moment is only 51 seconds between France and the leaders, uh, Germany. Here is Eric Lesser. Heard the Norwegian coach telling Christensen uh, it's 10 seconds now. That's to the lead. Oh, there is Christensen, bib number three. Yeah, Christiansen just jumping in the slipstream. I think that's a better bet than trying to get past and catch Germany, Mike. I think so, and he put all the energy out in the first half of the lap to make contact there, and uh, Nellen is fast in the skis. He, he opted for staying with this group. Probably a, a sensible strategy. They're bringing all the good music uh, as, as athletes come in. The calming music now. Well, that's because it's Germany in front. We'd have a little bit of heavy metal if it was Norway leading. Have a look at the wind flags. They, they've calmed down right now as well. <laughs> Can't be controlling that. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be surprised. <laughs> The wind uh, did pick up there for the as he fired his middle shot. Is anyone going to take the risk? Well, I think not with so many misses going down. A chance now for Sweden. Two misses from Lesser having hit the first four. Sweden getting close. It could be five out of five. Oh, misses number five. So there's their chance of taking the lead. 
Christensen, he is, he is so good normally, Christensen, in prone shooting, but struggling right now. Yeah, but he was the one who you picked out who was skiing hardest of all. And Simon Ada has rattled them down, shooting left-handed. And uh, now Christensen has one with one. But the clock is ticking. He's going to be at least 25 seconds behind by the time he gets out of the range. And Germany in a good position. Three shoots still to go. Lesser teamed up with Hildebrand, has one more lap, plus that short ski into the exchange area. So few teams hitting five with five. Can Poland do it? Yes, they can. Good shooting from Poland, uh, wearing bib number 23. Incredible Marcin shooting. Zappel. I think the nature of this race, Patrick, for me, is more exciting you because the ski time is so much shorter, you feel you have to put pressure on yourself or shoot faster, and, and that really is tripping up a lot of the athletes today. Most experienced, though, uh, Ader came in 29 seconds behind. He's part of the range, only 15 seconds behind the leader. So Ukraine have done well. They've got themselves back up into second, trailing by four seconds over Germany. Well, Eric Lesser just uh, absolutely skiing uh, above uh, his comfort zone, I would say. And Christensen has to take the pain on the track after that, uh, that poor shooting by his high standards. Yeah, 27 seconds behind the Norwegians. China and Belgium having a, a very good battle out there. That's brilliant. They're getting closer and closer to the front, Mike. And again, relying on good shooting. Uh, so many of the big teams have, have failed on that front. Fabian Cloud of France finds himself down in uh, ninth behind his brother. Uh, that's going to be uh, a nice shot if we get it as they get draw along beside each other. The space is hurting uh, Nellen, uh, Ader, that's him on his limit as well. And, and Eric is really, there he is at the front, Eric Lesser pushing hard. Is that tripping over the coach? No. The deep snow at the side. Well, he seems to have taken an age to get going again, but it was super slow mo. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I thought the same. I thought, get a move on. <laughs> Nine seconds to play with for Germany, with Slovenia in second, Sweden three, Austria four, uh, Ukraine were five coming out of the last shoot ahead of Russia and China. China ahead of the Norwegians. That would be a scalp to take. And I tell you what, uh, Oliana Bjorndal, I'm, I'm sure he still doesn't drink, but he would be raising a toast <laughs> of apple juice or something should China beat the Norwegians today. Uh, we've almost got to hope that that happens. Uh, Christiansen and Lien would not be able to live that down. But uh, really, rather than criticize them, I think you've got to give credit to the Chinese who've shown a lot of improvement over this week. Here yes, we go then, good. shoot number six. Eric will be aware of the athletes breathing on him now and his, onto his back. Russia with a chance to close, maybe possibly take the lead. Great shooting from the Russians, Anton Babikov on fire there. So the two leaders come out together. Norway again with Christiansen. Again, Mike, uh, paying the price of just skiing that little bit too hard. Simonada gets his down quickly, but requires at least two spares. Yes, Christensen almost in a state of panic. He's on the penalty loop yeah. again. One shot left, two targets to go down, panicking. And I hope that doesn't put a shooting off for tomorrow's race. 
Yeah, well, he won't be doing the double for Norway today. Uh, Russia, I think, uh, are too far ahead. Germany 2.1 behind. Brilliant fight for the top spot here. Ukraine and Austria fighting it out for three and four. But, you know, that's only a, what, one and a half spare rounds. And, and as the race comes to a conclusion, Mike, uh, very, very few people get a spare round loaded in a way in six seconds. No, and there's Sweden loop just handing over now, or are they? No, still on the loop. Two penalty loops for Sweden. Uh, what a mess. Yeah, it's not been good shooting for the Swedes today. Um, I think they need a wind machine in Ustersund, just to cr <laughs> not that they need it there. But uh, yeah. there's, a t there's a team that really should be able to cope with windy conditions. But is it more to do with knowing the characteristics of each range? Um, you know, when you have a range like this that's surrounded by forests and buildings and slopes, the wind doesn't just blow from left to right. It goes up, it goes down, it goes in rotors. It's all over the place. I think it is the single range in the whole World Cup calendar that, that is the most difficult because on your, say, lanes one, two and three, the wind does one thing. And then further down, down to lane 15, it does something else. So you have to be aware all the time in, in which lane you find yourself in. You've got to read the flags well. I think the fact that it's the best used penalty loop shows that. <laughs> it does. <laughs> Painful. Poor old Nell in uh, two penalty loops there. Uh, could have done without that. And he was placed well. He was only 13 seconds behind. Race is still wide open, uh, well, less wide than it was, but uh, it's beginning to take a shape, but so much can change in an instant. The end at 44, thanks to Christiansen's penalty loop, and uh, really doesn't have the chance to close that down. Extra loop at the end for the women, remember, to wrap up this race. So uh, they get the short straw today, and the, the wind absolutely howling down the home straight now. Yeah, Hildebrand could do with getting as close to the leader as possible. Yes, but I think Red Silver, that, that newfound ski speed that she has this season, now she's taking all the advantage uh, by pushing, by making sure that Hildebrand uh, fuels that gap. It, it was only 3.5, I think it's up to about five seconds now. There's Red Silver. Yeah, whenever we've been lucky enough to ski behind the Russians out training, Mike, always strikes me how good the balance is, how good their posture is on the ski. Uh, a lot of that comes from core strength, but much of it comes from the fact that they start skiing at such a young age. They certainly do, and especially uh, Retsova there at the front. Her mother was still racing when she was taken to the World Cups, racing in biathlon, having won medals in cross country as well. So a chance for Russia, two shoots to go, first in the prone, uh, 3.5 seconds when they went through 9.7. She's coming in, Patrick, at a, at a high level, not backing off uh, much in terms of pace, now beginning to back off slightly. Breathing rate is high, but not out of control by any stretch of the imagination. Here we go. One standing shoot to come after this. A lot of people have missed shot number four in this race. Yeah, you just begin to desire more air shots four and five. There you go again for Germany. Hildebrand misses four and five. Russia are away and starting to look pretty comfortable here. Ukraine need five with five if they're going to challenge their neighbors. Hildebrand, she takes so long getting that spear round out and then putting a new one in, much longer than most. Now, Belgium with Lotta Lee. Perfect shoot here. Oh, what a shame. What a shame. She's thrown number two wide. 
Five go down for Germany, but three spares required from Hildebrand. And don't forget, Germany came into the range three seconds behind the race leaders. That has suddenly gone to 25. It could switch the other way in the next shoot. We'll see. Still, Lodderley is there for Belgium. Norway suffering on the last leg with Christiansen and uh, leaving Ida Lien too much to do, I feel. France Shit. penalty loops, two more Tw penalty oh. loops for the French. Oh, Chevalier Boucher, that's uh, that is sad. It, the wind, I would have thought, isn't so difficult. It's panic and rushing and tension. She has had a few relay nightmares. Uh, the sort of nightmares that make your coach very nervous and unlikely to include you in a major championships. Threats of a solid. Well, this would be a good win for the Russians. They won the mixed relay here last year. Lap eight of nine to be skied. And with Fritz of us, uh, strong skiing, Patrick, uh, it, it's looking, at the moment, looking pretty good for Russia. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see whether she slows it right down. Hauser and Ada, again, proving a strong medal uh, potential team, Mike. Yes, the, the depth of experience and uh, Simon Ader bringing them back into the race, having Hauser surprisingly had, having dropped them down to, what, 49 seconds adrift now, but much better in second place. Hildebrand losing 36 seconds on that last shoot alone. Just has to uh, believe in her ability now. Shot well on her first leg, shot really well on her first leg but uh, let herself down in that last shoot. Belgium still holding on to a top five. The Chinese back in seven. So two teams that we picked out might provide uh, a, a surprise result are both up there in the top 10. Top 10 is brilliant. Uh, I don't think we can emphasize that enough for them. And of course, taking the scalp of the two Scandinavian teams, Sweden and Denmark. The Denmark. Denmark? <laughs> <And> Norway. <laughs> I just Which had Denmark on. I, <laughs> I, was, I was just starting to think, have we ever seen the Danes produce uh, biathletes? Uh, not really. We've seen Iceland racing. Uh, and, of course, the Danish have produced one or two, you know, reasonable cross-country skiers in the time. They certainly have. And... Um and very much basing themselves in Norway in their in their in their sports, uh, they love their cross country skiing. But uh, I think uh, when you see the Chinese coming strong now, you know no history, no no depth of history in terms of biathlon, it is possible to create and make biathletes. Now, give me a scenario, Mike, where the Russians might not win. I do worry about, about Retsova. She's she's finding this great skiing speed. Her shooting has been always fast, uh, much more accurate this season. Uh, the scenario would be two penalty loops, I would think. I would feel that Lisa Teresa Hauser will go five targets down, maybe one spare. Retsova, two, possibly three spares. If it's penalty loop, they may not win. Well, she's still got... Over 85% hit rate in the stand this year. She's got a lot of time, 26 seconds in hand. It'd be nice to finish with a quick five with five. It's not going to happen. That gets the nerves jangling yeah. when you start missing. <laughs> yeah, and if this doesn't go down, it does. So three rounds, two targets, still no one on the mat. No need to panic. In control. Couple of deep breaths. Wind is wind is kind, and that seals it. That seals it. Austria and Hauser won't chase down uh, Retsova. Austria need to switch their psyche from defend or well, going for first to defending second, and that is not the way to do it. What's happened to Hauser? It's just so out of character. The best, most reliable biathlete you, you would want in your team. Yeah, just wondering whether the wind distracted her or whether it was the arrival of the Germans. Uh, Ukraine could be the team to capitalize with Blaschko. 
Four out of four. She's looking good. Oh! Yeah. Hildebrand taking an age for that second shot. Uh, the wind is affecting them. Of course it is. Look at her hair blowing. Well, Austria are away, so the first two slots are taken. Now, if uh, Lotta Lee can do something for Belgium, are we going to see a Belgium team challenging for a podium finish? Oh, that miss could prove very expensive. Germany are in all sorts of trouble. Two misses from Lee. The wind absolutely howling at the moment. And uh, they may be well advised just to wait and wait and wait. And Hildebrand Mike, who I thought had uh, half sealed a ticket to China, I think has probably thrown it, put it on the fire again. Well, I think it's gone back to the booking office right now, but there's still two, two bullets left, two targets. And what about Norway? Look at that one target hit from five fired. It's a bit yeah. of a mess. And if Belarus can do it, why can't the others? Belarus have ripped through the targets to uh, move up into a top position. China clear five. Belgium, I think, have a penalty loot. The Chinese very quick, only one spare required on that occasion. So uh, without a doubt. So we've got uh, Belgium actually getting away in sixth. Switzerland seven, Germany in eighth, with China just on their heels in ninth position. So uh, two brilliant results from the minor nations. And Slovenia, who were up in the top two early on, pushed down into 10th, 143 off the leaders. And uh, has to be said, Mike, Russia uh, got in and out before the strong wind came. Yes, they did. Uh, you need two good shooters. Babikov is excellent. Retsova is much, much better. What a race. I think the format, Patrick, it's, it's when you're used to skiing for seven or seven and a half minutes as a minimum before you shoot, you get into a pattern. This race is so short and sharp. I think uh, especially Lisa, Teresa Hauser, was really affected by, uh, by over-breathing when she was on the range. She didn't find her normal, normal rhythm. Yeah, it's just around four minutes, just slightly over four minutes for uh, each of the women's loops. Blaschko. She could be caught. I'm just, uh, there's no yeah. athlete quite fast enough to catch her the way, because Blaschko is not the fastest, but looking safe now. Leshanka for Belarus, I think, is in danger, being hunted by Sweden and Germany. Hildebrand, I think, uh, I'm not sure how much energy she's got left after being on the, did she go on the penalty loop? Uh, Germany with no, uh, no she just avoided it three spares she, required what about Ida Lea and she only hit two targets from eight shots fired in standing three penalty loops yeah so Norway out of the top ten and uh, China up in ninth at the moment they are still a oh, fair way behind the Chinese but here come your winners it's Russia who do it again they won the mixed relay here last year they win the single mixed relay here this year good shooting difficult conditions yes they got a little bit lucky on that last shoot uh, but that's what you get for being ahead of everyone else very much uh, Babikov will be delighted and maybe Babikov has secured himself uh, into the Russian World Cup team he's been back at the IBU didn't ski fast enough but shooting and skiing much better at the World Cup. Hauser Ada, is this their team for the major championships, do you think? I, I thought Felix Leitner may have, uh, would have heard a position the way he's managed his performances on skis and on the range, but how could you leave uh, Simon Ada out, the most experienced, and today probably one of the best shots uh, on the range. Many teams making their selections tomorrow night. Uh, they have to get the squad names in at least, and then they'll watch the form with uh, the top 20 teams all allowed to enter four in a race at the Olympic Games. And then I believe there are 12 slots available on top of that. And then uh, if, if the Chinese don't fall into the category, then uh, the host nation get another two. So what's that, a, a maximum of uh, 92 athletes in, a, in the Olympic race? It's been tough. It's always a tough journey uh, making it to the Olympics. Hildebrand in a sprint with Sweden and Belgium. Uh, Lotte Lee just gets ahead of uh, Hildebrand. So Sweden five, Belgium six, Germany in seven, eight is Switzerland. 
and the Chinese are going to go top 10 as well. And this is a really good race from Slovakia, ranked number 20, Ivona Fialkova just finishing for them ahead of uh, China's Meng Fanqui. France, they've beaten the French, they've beaten the Norwegians, they've beaten the Slovenians. That is absolutely brilliant for, for the uh, Chinese team. And only and really, seven, seven spare rounds used, the best shooting team again on the range, China. Yeah, yeah the best this morning, the best uh, this afternoon. We don't need to guess how much time they've been spending on the range over the last uh, four years. <laughs> it's all about repetition, it, it really is. Most teams uh, are maybe not uh, overly or frightened of saturation shooting. I think saturation shooting works. Ukraine and Russia on the podium together. Baba Bandika just coming across the line for Latvia. Uh, most penalty loops, France, five penalty loops. What did happen? Uh, Fabian Cloud and Anais uh, Chevalier-Boucher. That was disappointing. She she was good in Osterson, Mike, and then her form dropped away. I thought it had suddenly come back up with a good race yesterday. Finished sixth in the sprint yesterday, but uh, couldn't do anything today. 11, that's Susan Dunkley of the United States. Just getting the uh, the better of, is that Romania? Yes, Susan Dunkley, that's 22. I thought she did really well in the sprint uh, yesterday, 28th position, and uh, hit all of her targets. Wasn't the same today. What a difference a day makes in biathlon. Yeah, it certainly does. So that wraps up the action from Oberhof mix relay and uh, a single mix relay. Earlier on today, good victory by the Norwegians in the mixed relay. The two Burr brothers playing uh, an instrumental part in that, but it was uh, finished off by Roisland, the Women's World Cup leader. Another good performance from her. And then this afternoon, Russia taking a win in the single mix relay, Babikov and Retsova. So the trailing teams just coming across the line, they must have been very, very close to being uh, lapped in this race, four minutes 37 behind, just getting out of the range before the uh, race leaders came in. Retsova must be included in the Russian team now. She's looked very good over the last three weeks. Retsova, she did set the fastest time on that leg four. Fialkova just behind her by, what, three seconds, and Baserga. Uh, the 21 year old from Switzerland, she had the third fastest, only 12 seconds slower than Retsova. Pretty good weekend so far for the Russians. They, of course, got the win in the men's sprint yesterday with Alexander Loginov. They've rested him. So they'll be expecting him to do the double and win the pursuit tomorrow as we have a look at the top 10 positions. Uh, certainly for me, Mike, the most exciting thing about that is that uh, Belgium and China have both got themselves on the front sheet of the results. Uh, and also, uh, it's nice to see the Austrian veterans, uh, Hauser and Ada, still good enough to finish in the top three. It is, and, and that's why I love this race. And I think it's got a whole lot of potential for developing nations. We've seen that with, uh, with China. Uh, with big nations, say, uh, France and Norway struggling, it, it has allowed these smaller teams to come through. Uh, I would like to see it even uh, shorter to, to one kilometre uh, each skiing lap so that there was more focus uh, on the shooting. Well, there's a surprise. 
<laughs> it's funny how but we it, all favour our strengths. Isn't it strange, though, uh, how when you change your routines, you know, you never would have expected Christensen to struggle today, nor Ida Lien. They, they both did, and the same with the French team. It really struggled just because of a slightly shortened routine. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm with you in the respect that the variation of the penalty for missed targets should be should be far greater than it is at the moment. Uh, it does change from race to race, but I'd like to see a greater variation so the marks uh, men and women have have a real opportunity to shine. Yes, the ski speed, um, I suppose, from when biathlon started, the penalty did account for what 30 seconds uh, for 150 meters, but skiing and equipment so much faster now. Yeah. How's a big smile, but um, they'll have a quick look at the results just to see where it went wrong because take away the misses and take away the penalty, they have every chance of beating Russia. They've got to do it on the range, really, haven't they, Mike? Because Simon Ader isn't quick enough to chase anyone down. And uh, Hauser still not showing her best ski form. It, she, she isn't. Um, and yes, uh, I remember Simon Ader saying three years ago, four years ago, he would love to stay for one more Olympic Games, and, and he just hoped uh, back then that his ski speed wouldn't drop off too much. It's still there. He, he can still produce it. We saw that today. So I think he'll be safe uh, uh, on that trip over to China. <laughs> yeah, I think the shorter distance suits him, to be honest. Uh, you, you mentioned this morning about Hauser, how uh, she got a win here last year, and that really lit the fuse in terms of her confidence. Uh, and I'm just wondering if you can explain that. How, how does it work? You get one win and suddenly you can beat everyone consistently. Uh, I think it's to do with, with the combined, the shooting. And uh, Ligrid said that last year, uh, he was petrified to stay in the team. What did he have to do? And then all of a sudden he won a race and he said it was transforming. He, he could back off and, and, and relax a lot more. I think that was the case with Lisa Teresa. She had that third place on the podium, and, and, it, and it felt easy, she said. And then she thought, this isn't impossible anymore. So it's, it's a weird, it's almost a mind thing where you then begin to believe that you can do it. In my, my little journey, I, I'd never shot better than six minutes penalty in a 20K. Then on one given day, I, I missed two. It was at the Olympics. And I knew I would shoot clear in the 10-shot in the test, the sprint, the next uh, race. And it was just belief. Can you believe? You can. If you think exactly. you can't, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> That's all the thing. <laughs> and it is a pity yet that this race isn't actually in the Olympic programme. The mixed really is men and women. Uh, but uh, hopefully by Cortina in 2026 it will be. Bit of a mixed bag for the Norwegians today. Success in the mixed relay. Bit of a disaster in the single mix. Down in 16th position. 221 off the leaders. Germany missing out on a podium, but uh, iron out the mistakes and they know they're good enough to get themselves into the top three. Babikov, solid as ever, really gave Retzeva a good platform to attack from. And Retzeva as we've seen over the last few weeks, is no slouch. She's up to eighth in the World Cup standings. She picks up top prize money today, 41.37, the winning time for the Austrian team. And just thinking, Patrick, Reds of her tomorrow. She sets out 26 seconds behind Reuschland uh, in the pursuit competition. In Russia, congratulations, uh, super, super performance in really tough conditions. Anton, back in the World Cup, back on the win. Yesterday, a great performance as well. Are you happy with this uh, start? 
Uh, sure, it was really exciting because uh, uh, yesterday was a hard race and a uh, good, uh, ra good race for me, sure, because uh, it was too much exciting when you come before uh, two, three caps before the Olympic Games and you need to, to show results. Uh, but today, all the goal, I think, uh, uh, fall down after the start of the race because it was too much wind and uh, all the men was really fast. But uh, after leg of uh, Christina, I know that uh, we can do it and uh, uh, try to put all of my power for the second leg. And I'm really happy. You did a great job. Congratulations. Christina, how about you? Very, very good after the difficult start in, uh, in this relay. But uh, with the wind, you really had to concentrate until the end. Кристина, расскажите немного о своем этапе, потому что начали немного позади, но потом все же смогли бороться, особенно с ветром. Как ваши этапы проходили? А, да, на первом этапе на Лёшке а, в большинстве своем я сама ошибалась. Там даже, то есть я пришла, увидела ветер, сделала поправку, но недостаточно. И когда мне показали стрельбу после моего этапа, там был очень большой разброс. И это немножко, конечно, заставило меня понервничать, но благо я чувствовала себя хорошо и уже ну, начинала отыгрывать с самого начала как могла и собралась на дальнейшую стрельбу, когда Антон передал мне первый после второго этапа. Это, конечно, меня чуть-чуть потряхивало, но, в принципе, я знала, что если просто сделать все как надо, то у нас очень большие шансы выиграть. Yeah, at the first leg, especially on the prone shooting, there were more my mistakes uh, than the wind. Uh, when I was leaving the range, then uh, the coaches showed me my shooting, so I knew uh, how it was um, like in all places. And um, uh, yeah, I was just trying to uh, be a little bit more calmer on the next uh, ranges. And uh, when Anton gave me uh, in the first place uh, for the final leg, uh, I was a little bit nervous, but I was trying to do my best, and that's what I could uh, do. You totally did. Congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, good weekend for them. They were sixth and seventh, uh, respectively, yesterday in the sprint races. They've gone and won the single mixed relay, uh, a dream pairing, maybe. Maybe we'll see them in China representing the uh, Russian team. Uh, there are some of the big names further down the order. Finland, they were up there to start with, but dropped away. Well, this is the mixed relay score, which combines this morning's race and this afternoon's. United States down in 26th. It's not been, uh, not been a fruitful start to the season for them. Maybe that record will continue, Mike. The only sport that America do not have an Olympic medal in. Well, we'll have to wait and see. Maybe the mixed relay is the is the the, the, the stronger card. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. And the Austria Austrian team we mentioned earlier, just again the experience uh, taking them to the top part of the race, didn't quite get the Russians, but absolutely in the race after the first leg, which was maybe a little disappointing. So the Ukrainians taking third spot, Artem Tyshenko, who took the first leg, Daria Blashko took the second and of course the anchor leg as is the way in the single mixed relay a format that is growing in popularity I think it took a bit of time for everyone to get their head around it but uh, it's short it's sharp there are lots of twists and turns Mike very very seldom does a team get away and stay away for long yes uh, so much happened today didn't it on the range uh, the team that came in first was not guaranteed to be the first to depart the range Glückwunsch zum zweiten Rang nach Österreich. Simon 
Here's a pairing that have won the World Team Challenge and represented Austria on many, many occasions. Both of them, of course, part of the team that took the silver medal in the mixed relay in the World Championships. The champions. That is good news for the team, isn't it? Uh, with Loganov's win, uh, you mentioned uh, now a victory here. That's uh, that's going to really lift the spirits in the Russian camp. Yeah, I think Statoil will be a bit happier. Long term, long term sponsor of the Russian team. So Russia, Austria, Ukraine, the top three. Belarus just missing out in fourth. They're only some 12 seconds off the podium. Sweden, five, uh, having done two penalty loops. So skiing well, but shooting badly. Belgium, brilliant. Sixth place for them. Uh, no penalty loops. They did miss 13. So they'll start to think they can finish on the podium. And I tell you what, they only had to hit four or five more targets than they would have done. They beat Germany in seventh, Switzerland eight, Slovakia nine, and for the first time ever, the Chinese in a single mixed relay getting into the top 10. But it's Russia who go away as the champions. 41-37, the winning time in the single mixed relay here in Oberhof. And again, a reminder of tomorrow's program at uh, 11.30, we have the men's pursuit with Alexander Loginov leading the way out of the stadium, having won the sprint. And then at 1.45, we will have the women's pursuit. And that will be every bit as exciting as the men. So I hope you've got a few minutes to spare tomorrow to watch those. And until then, have a very good weekend.